Hey, welcome to the Work of Life Church. I'm so glad you're joining us for what is a remarkable time in the journey of our church. Today is Water Baptism Sunday. It's celebration. It's full of joy. We're going to open the Word of God and see what God does next. Who's glad to be in church tonight? Tonight is a celebration. It's a special night. It really is because, you know, the truth is in Great Britain, church across the board is not that known for its relevance, for its life-giving joy, for its rejoicing. But, you know, just because that is in the wider culture, that doesn't mean that you and I don't have something to change in these next months and years ahead. And tonight we are celebrating not what God did 200 years ago or 300 years ago or 2,000 years ago, but what God is doing in the lives of your family your friends, your relatives, your extended family. We're celebrating what he's about to do in the next few months and years ahead because our God is an awesome God. And so tonight is about celebrating. It's about rejoicing. This is a water baptism service. And so we want to celebrate rejoice like we do here at Life Church. So turn to the person next to you and say, I am so glad you're here with us tonight. I am so glad you're ready. I'm so glad that we're gonna celebrate what God is gonna do. We have 18 people that are registered to be water baptized tonight. How amazing. If you are about to be water baptized and you've already signed up, just lift your hand wherever you are. Lift your hand, all the people here who have already decided. Come on, can we give all these people a round of applause? So good. You know, last week, I spoke about this in the five o'clock service. I talked about the lost syndrome. I talked about Luke chapter 15, how Jesus looks for people that are lost, people that are far from home. And tonight we're celebrating people who have come home. We're celebrating people who are already convinced that Jesus is who he said he was. And so we are celebrating people who made a decision. And I says that, I says celebration because, you know, we need to understand that It may not be the norm, like I said earlier, for churches, but we need to change the status quo in Britain. The most life should be in the church, not in the nightclubs. The most joy should be in the house of God, not out there in the wider community, because this is where the real life is. Now, I know this firsthand because I've been out in the world doing a whole bunch of things before I came to know Jesus as a musician, as a rock drummer, and I am so grateful that Jesus rescued me, saved me, changed my life. But you know what? It's not enough that we have how many people here because there's so many people in the community that are still lost, still broken, still hurting. And so what we're celebrating is people who have accepted Jesus and now who are going to go on and get free from addictions and past mistakes and all kinds of things so that we can see more and more people come to know the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Maybe you're here today and you don't know how great it is to have Jesus in your heart. How awesome it is to be forgiven for past things. And we want you to know tonight's your night to accept him as your Lord and Savior. I am not embarrassed about the Jesus that gave his life for me. I'm not embarrassed about the Jesus that healed me, that set me free, that gave me a family, that healed my my sickness, my conditions, and gave me a fresh start. And so if you're at Life Church tonight and you think we're excited, you need to know you ain't seen nothing yet because I believe there's a risen Lord who's a conquering king and he's alive. Now, I know there is so much confusion about what water baptism is, but let me tell you as a church what we are doing. In 2016, since the beginning of the year, we have had 226 salvations in the Bradford campus alone. 226. If we bring in the rest of our campuses, we've had 460 decisions for Jesus so far this year. That's awesome. Already today, 62 people have been water baptized. So we're rejoicing in what God is doing. And what I'm excited about is these are your friends and your family that are coming to Christ because this is your church. This is our church. This is our home. This is our church, our home. And so as we expand and as we grow, it's so important that we understand that Jesus designed his church to be ever increasing to be a family that welcomes new people into the family of God, that is always expanding and growing. 
We don't want people to feel excluded or left out of God's family. And God's family has a way of working that's biblical. And when we talk about water baptism, uh, this is the subject that's so confusing to so many people. And I've looked this up in the Oxford Dictionary, which should bring clarity, don't you think? And it's so confusing because the Ox Oxford Dictionary says baptism is about sprinkling or immersion. Sprinkling or immersion. So if you read the Webster's Collegiate Dictionary, it goes on to say that Water baptism is about sprinkling. And whenever you see confusion like this, even in the dictionaries, we have to go back to the source, which is the Bible. And I know that maybe you're here today and you've not really seen hot tubs in church before. But the Bible teaches that baptism, the word baptize means to immerse, not to sprinkle, but immerse. And, and you know, and, and I realize that as the centuries of church changed in 300 AD, 400 AD, they became in the practice started by the Catholic Church of sprinkling water on an infant and later on three different churches sprinkling because it was easier than bringing in water tanks and I understand that. But the biblical mandate is for complete water baptism. And so I'm going to start in Matthew chapter 3 because I always think it's good to start with Jesus, don't you? And the, the words are going to come behind, up behind me here. Matthew chapter 3, verse 13 to 16. And the Bible says that Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you come to me. And Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. And then John consented. And as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water and at that moment, heaven was opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. Jesus, he introduced baptism. He was water baptized. And of course, now Jesus died on a cross. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 6 and in Colossians chapter 1 that, that the water baptism, it symbolizes what Jesus did by his dying on a cross for each and every one of us, and then his burial, and then his resurrection. And what you're going to see is people who are identifying with what the Bible teaches. From this place in Matthew where Jesus began this process of water baptism, then it became the standard and the practice for the early church. So when you see the book of Acts, when the early church started, Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Peter said, he said, each and every one of you should be water baptized. He said, repent and be baptized. You see, Matthew 28, when Jesus was resurrected, he said, go into all the world, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You see it again and again and again and again in Scripture. In fact, there is not one instance in Scripture except for the thief on the cross where an individual was not water baptized. And you know, I know people say, well, the thief on the cross wasn't water baptized, so that means we don't have to be water baptized. As I was thinking about it and saying, God, maybe I don't have to be water baptized, I felt this thought pop into mind, Steve, if you were hanging on the cross, I wouldn't ask you to get water baptized either. So unless you're hanging on the cross, you know, I think we should all go ahead and get water baptized. In other words, the excuses that we have in our society today, and if we let our excuses guide us, we'll never follow anything that's biblical because our culture around us is anything but biblical. This service, Sunday at 5 o'clock, is not normal. It's not normal for our British culture. It's not normal for the wider church culture. But we're not here to establish a British culture. We're here to establish a kingdom culture. We're here to do something so much more because our world needs Jesus. And there are so many people who normally wouldn't go to church who are even here tonight. Maybe you come with a friend or a family member and you're shocked. You're shocked that we have drums in church, a band in church. You're shocked by people that actually want to be in church. You're shocked even by people that hang around long and come early. You're shocked by so many people serving. That's because Jesus is alive. He's risen, he's resurrected, and he's making a difference. If you're here tonight and you've already been water baptized, put both hands in the air. That's amazing. That is not the norm for our nation. 
where people understand what baptism is. To be immersed, to be wholly submerged, to be under the influence of God from that moment. And the Bible has amazing scriptures. The Bible talks about how you can be baptized in water and come up free from a changed life. We had an experience even today of someone that was water baptized and then after they were water baptized, they were filled with the Holy Spirit and baptized with the Holy Spirit after that service. I mean, just amazing because of the sequence of events. And what I'm trying to say is this, this is our standard. The Bible is our standard. And my experience was so different than this. You see, like I said, I was sprinkled with water. And when I began to read the Bible, I was like, how come nobody told me what the water baptism really is? Maybe that would have saved me from getting screwed up in drugs and alcohol and all kinds of immorality. Maybe if somebody would have told me how to live a clean life and how that Jesus just didn't call me to get saved, but he called me to live free and to live for purpose, but no one explained that to me. So I had to wait until I was 19 years old until finally I understood it. And when I understood it, I was so impacted by what the Bible teaches and by the truths that I began to study and see in the Word of God that I simply had to take action. See, the longest period in the Bible was three days, like I'd said, where someone went from salvation when they accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and then they finally got water baptized. And that person was a murderer. He killed people for a living. He was a modern day terrorist. He was called Saul. And yet God so transformed his life after his water baptism and after he got filled with the Holy Spirit, then after that moment, what he did next that was so dynamic that, that he became the greatest missionary in the New Testament. And God used him to write just over one half of the entire New Testament. He became this mighty Apostle Paul. So don't sit there and think, oh my gosh, because I've done mistakes and made things called sin in my life, God has no future, God has no purpose. No, tonight you are free, you have a destiny, you have a future. God is waiting for you to rise up for your family, for your children, for your grandchildren, for the next generations to come. And so I know that this is not a normal cultural norm to come into church and see water baptisms. But you know what? It's entirely biblical. And if we can see 226 salvations in a year, then we can see 2,000 salvations. Then we can go on and we can see more than that. If we live by this book, the Bible, and it's everything that we follow, this is not just some book to sit up on a shelf. No, this is a manual for 21st century living. And I am proud to stand up on this stage and say that Jesus is my Lord, He is my Savior, and He has set me free. And so what we're going to do is this. We're going to have a testimony. A testimony of someone that has met Jesus in a very special, dramatic way. A, a, a person who's an average, ordinary person, just like you or me, and yet encountered an incredible God. So I want Richie Garrett, who works in our outreach and helping with people to come up and explain what's going to happen next. Can we get up for Richie Garrett? Doing a tremendous job in our church. Come on up, guys. Taylor. Melissa, why didn't you come up? All right. This is awesome. And uh, Baptism Sunday, one of my, probably my favorite Sunday of the year. And it's awesome. So well done for every single one of you guys who've made that decision. It's, it's, a, it's amazing. It's incredible. It's a very special day. But this is the Gowlands. And uh, this is Steve and Zoe, Taylor and Melissa. And um, they've, these guys have been part of the Life Church family now for six months. And uh, they've been on an incredible journey. And uh, the, these guys have, I met these, uh, this family in, on the growth track, believe it or not. Never, never met them before in church. Met them on the growth track when I was teaching. And it's kind of, we just, we've just connected. We've, it's like we've known each other for years. And I was hanging out around the house last night and Steve was making me pizza. It's a good pizza maker. So, um, so this is awesome. What I, I love about this is, um, Melissa was, was baptized when she was probably about nine, 10, something like that, um, already, already done it. And, um, but it's gonna be special today because the rest of the family are gonna join her in that, taking that next step, which is, which is pretty awesome. 
Um, so, like I said, they've, they've been part of the farm now for six months and been on an incredible journey. And I just wanted Steve just to, just to share a few, uh, a little bit of that story. Um, and uh, you can see the, see the clock there, that one there. Is that it? But the, the monitor, as in Rich Martin, school monitor. Um, so, no, it's cool, man. Would you share some of the stuff the church want to hear? It's incredible. Okay, hi, everybody. I've only got one minute 57, so I better make it quick. Um, okay, yeah. Me and Melissa, we basically got married quite a long time ago. And as Richie said, Melissa was, was already a Christian. And from the minute we got married, things became really, really tough. Now, it shouldn't be like this. It should be reasonably straightforward and it should be enjoyable. But every kind of business that we got involved in financially um, was really hard. We worked really hard and it, we did as much as we possibly could. Now, a certain member of my family was involved in something that has spiritual ties that we've since found out about money and getting you involved in it. And they, I think they actually swear you into this thing. So it was really hard for many, many years. And I know that Melissa's mum and dad, which are just over here, um, I found out the other day had actually been praying for me and when we had the children, obviously, for them as well, for, for this to get dealt with and for myself especially to be, become a Christian. So tough times. I made the decision I was going to do that. So I went over to their church in Wales and uh, I made the decision to give my life to Jesus. Now, from that minute I walked out of there, I felt completely different. Then I've only got 30 seconds left, so I'm going to have to be quick. Are you sure? Is that all right? So we, um, yeah, I felt different. So we came back from Wales um, and we'd been living in Cornwall, but we'd moved back, back to Leeds, which is where I'm from originally. And Melissa had been looking for a church to get us involved in. Um, and every time she said, will you come with me? I said, no, I don't want to go. It's, it's not for me. And then she came to a conference here and she came back and I said, how was it? And she went, it was all right. And it wasn't one of yours, wasn't one of your conferences. So you're cool with that. It was somebody else. And she said, but the place is really cool. And I really want to go back. Let's go on Sunday. Now that Sunday was the one that Richie was talking about the first time we came. And it was when you did the water baptisms last time. So that's amazing. So this is huge for us. We are really back at home in many senses of the word. And my life has changed completely. And I'm sure these guys will tell you, it really has. It's unbelievable. So today is like massive. And I'm expecting a lot more. And I'm so excited about what's going to happen after this. Okay, thank you. Isn't that awesome? That's what it's about. So, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna now baptize Steve, Zoe, and and Taylor. This is amazing, Steve. I'm holding the microphone for you. You're not gonna sing, Steve. We are so proud of you a man of God in your household, leading for your household. And I think you represent something incredibly special in our generation. And what's gonna happen now is that freedom that you've been praying about is now gonna be experienced. So Richie, go ahead and pray and then we'll baptize them. Steve, on your confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Princess, you're a superstar, aren't you? Okay, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. listened to the truth of the Word of God and considered where you're at in water baptism. I hope you've been impacted. And now I want to ask you the question, what are you waiting for? There's local churches in your area, and if not, come visit one of our campuses in Belfast, Leeds, Bradford, or Warsaw, Poland, and we will help you understand what water baptism is and get you water baptized. I really hope you walk in this truth because Jesus doesn't just want you saved, He wants you free, free from your past, free from any pain that you've experienced in life and getting you ready for your future, getting you ready for the great things that God wants to do in your life. So I really pray you make that decision and you decide to follow Jesus. Charlotte Gamble's latest book helps us to find perspective in the tough seasons of life. It talks about wisdom in the weariness, strength for the struggles, more passion to persist and joy for the journey of life. Engaging, personal and full of biblical truth and wisdom. To purchase this book or discover more resources, visit her website charlottegamble.com.